in studio with Jefferson County Prosecuting Ma- Attorney Matt Harvey, who's uh, kind of bound by attorney-client privilege, and what uh, you can say and not say regarding this situation, because you kind of act as legal counsel for the commission. That's correct, yes. Which puts you in a situation where there's not a whole lot you can say, even though you yeah. might want to or you know sure. something one way or the other. It's the same thing for like when, in a criminal case that's still pending, you know, where we measure our words carefully. Scheduled to appear on the program was Meredith Moore from Small Town Ghost Tours. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, maybe we got our signals crossed or whatever, uh, we do not have Meredith Moore. However, I do understand that uh, former Delegate Mike Folk has called to weigh in on this situation in Jefferson County. Mike, what do you know about this? Well, probably not as much as, in some respects, not as much as you've heard from the uh, at least the one side, but maybe a little bit of the back end of it, because I've had a few conversations and seen a few documents in the last uh, week, because after your show where you had the one county commissioner on, and I've known him for 45 years probably, all the way back to eight years old, attending our first 4-H camp together. Steve Stolifer, you're talking about. Yes. Uh, I think he made a comment or a claim that, uh, a grant was lost because they didn't have didn't show up and approve it. Yes, uh, uh, Steve Pearson I made think, mention of that too in his article in the West Virginia Independent Observer. Who did? Steve Pearson, who wrote an article about it in the West Virginia Independent Observer. Well, I've seen some documentation, and 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 Matt can verify or or not verify. This is just typically sometimes if they've done it in the past. And that is what I'm getting ready to say is that, say, something has to be done before the next county commission meeting. And if they have a policy in place that they allow approval by email from an administrator uh, to the commission, it's been allowed in the past, supposedly, and they can do that currently. In other words, some counties have done that as a past practice. And my understanding, and I have seen a couple emails where the administrator of the county asked for permission to approve the grant that I believe is in question, two of the county commissioners responded, two didn't. The two that responded with, with uh, approval were ones that have not been attending the meetings. So that's just a different angle on that whole argument. I can just tell you this. There's a power struggle in the Republican Party in West Virginia, if you haven't noticed it. Well, it's very noticeable. It be Demo- it, 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 and it's not just in Jefferson County. That may be the, a little bit of the epicenter of it, but it's not just in Jefferson County. It's, sta- it's statewide. And you literally, where you used to have the Democrats versus the Republicans, well, there's so many Democrats that have switched to Republican that now the the factions and a lot of the Republicans that used to act like Republicans are acting more like Democrats because you know how uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, You've got the two factions within the party now. You've got the old people that stood up for conservative principle, family values and things like that versus the ones that like to spend like drunken sailors. And as long as the, uh, the, uh, People in Washington keep spend, sending money via debt monetization to the states, and it started with the CARES Act and continues to the, to today with Biden Biden economics or Bidenomics as they call them. Uh, it won't end. So there's a real power struggle within the party. True. So in regards to the Jefferson County Commission situation, uh, I, I have asked about that email situation. I've got. Two different answers on that. One is that you are not permitted to vote on items like this via email. And then I've got another one that it's not clear. Well, I think, and this is where it comes down to, what has that specific county commission uh, done in the past? In other words, if a county commission has a policy that they've been doing in the past, nobody's ever questioned it, then it's okay. It may be, and if the county commission, in, in, and this is in general, If a county commission or a uh, municipality, you know, uh, 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 town council or whatever has a policy, uh, as an example, and this is not necessarily for approval by emails, but like in Berkeley County for a while, they were allowing 
uh, county commissioners or county council members, whatever they're called in, uh, these days in Berkeley County. They're commission to, members again. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. So they can they can call in and participate in a vote via phone. Well, they have. So since that policy has been done and nobody's questioned it, past practices says, okay, you can do it. And and I agree with you, if they haven't done it in the past in Jefferson County, I don't know the answer to this question. Well, ho- hold on, Mike. That's a, You're talking about a duly convened commission meeting where a commissioner calls in to voice a vote versus in the situation in Jefferson County where there wasn't there wasn't a, a meeting. There wasn't a meeting. Not, I'm, I'm not arguing about I'm not I'm not arguing your point. I'm just saying it depends on what past practices have been. In other words, if they have done this in the past, it's contrary to even if it's contrary to a statute that says it's illegal. As long well, as they well, have as long all, as it's past practice is, is it's there, okay. I don't know is there a statute that says it's illegal? The Open Meetings Act? No, I'm not talking about the Open Open I'm not, I'm it's specific that says you can't approve a grant via email. I, I'm asking you: Is it is an well, Open Meetings Act no violation? Stat- is is voting by email without convening a quorum? It, would that be an Open Meetings Violation Act? Do you do you get the do leg, would legislatures uh, not go in session and vote? In front of me, but but first of all, it's um, that's a question. Yeah, well, this is a federal grant, right? Money from you're not. I don't know. I, I I don't know all the specifics on this, but I know I know in general when law is silent on an issue, and you know this, if it's silent on a specific issue, and you know how lawyers lawyers you all are taught to <laughs> argue both sides of the case, even though you might have an opinion one way or the other. That's true. I argue both sides. What's that? That's true. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, I'm trying to have an open mind with this because some of these people are friends on both sides. Sure. Uh, and so. I do know that people on both sides have, from what I've seen so far, have some valid concerns. And But I haven't d- delved down into the nitty-gritty like I usually do. Uh, I only ask the questions to get the right answer because some things have been done, and I've heard this from some attorneys involved, and I'll just talk about one issue, uh, and I don't know all the details, but I can, I can just tell you that there's some things going on with solar farms in Jefferson County that uh, good attorneys um, question. That does and appear to be what's and, at the good, basis of this, yes. And, the and there's, farm. there's five pending lawsuits. Mm-hmm. And, you That's know, I, I, and, I, and I'm going to say something a little bit about, yeah, and I'm, one of the attorneys involved is kind of, uh, anyway, long story short, I agree totally with property rights. I'm an absolutist as far as what you can do with your property. As long as you're not affecting your neighbor in an adverse way, um, or you, but, but that doesn't include, I'll give you an example. If somebody decides to move next to a hog farm and they want to complain about the smell of pig manure, that's their problem, not the farmer's problem. But at the same time, in in the case of like, uh, solar farms, they wouldn't exist if it wasn't for massive subsidies. So that's where uh, it's a, it, it takes a little different rub on, and especially if you read, there's a retired NASA scientist uh, who talks about the problem with wall-to-wall solar panels being on the ground. And as a pilot, and I'm not, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head, but he's been worked on all the major things back in the 60s and 70s and all the big things, uh, all the big, uh, you know, landmarks that we've done in space. And he just did it from a scientific perspective. And I can tell you he's right on the money. As a pilot, I feel it every day depending on where I'm flying. And I'll just leave it at that. What are you talking about? You feel what? Like the heat well, from them, you, like the ground if heat. If you cover, if you cover vast amounts of land with certain things, uh, and a plane, it changes, and the sun hits it and does its thing. It affects uh, uh, airflow and things like that, and weather weather conditions tremendously. 
it's no different than a mountain when it when it uh for, of course most of our uh most of our weather comes west to east here right right so unless you have a hurricane off the coast and so when that happens as air moves up if it's lifted up a mountain in the summer mm-hmm. the higher the air goes the less uh uh the, the colder the temperature colder Colder air uh, masses can't hold the moisture. That's why you get thunderstorms. As the air is lifted, you get a dump. Hey, let, let's let's get let's get back to the matter at hand. Of Solar course, panels do the same type of thing. Right. Let, let's get back to the matter of the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee, which uh, was the recipient of a suit, I suppose, yesterday by is it uh, Mark Everhart? I think was behind the lawsuit. As I'm. Um, okay. Told so. Well, I haven't seen that, so I'd be speaking unless Matt can tell me what the specific charge is in there. I can't speak to it. And this has to do with uh, the complaint that it was a voice vote that the JCREC took, or it was not a voice vote. It should have been a voice vote, and it wasn't. And that is the basis of the complaint right now by the commissioners Jackson and Kraus, as I understand it, as to why they won't show up at the meeting because it was uh, a, an illegal vote. So the basis of the because naming of the commissioner a, was, was illegal. Because it was a roll call versus a voice vote? Apparently. Uh, but when I questioned D. Kersey about that yesterday, he said that is not an objection. It's, it's, not, it's not a valid objection. So, well, just in general, Robert's rules of order and things like that, and like I'm going to talk about house rules, and everybody has a little, uh, when I say body, every uh Deliberative body has a different set of rules they may or may not follow, depending on their uh, their charter and things like that. Uh, it's typically with anybody's right to call for a, a roll call, and I and that might be could speak to that too. So I, I don't know how valid of an argument that is. Now, if their charter says everything has to be a voice vote, uh, first of all, I'd question who in heck wrote that charter. That, um, that apparently is in the language, as, as shown and outlined on Commissioner Krause's Facebook page, I believe it is. But even when questioned about that, D. Kersey said, no, that's not a valid objection. Shall, you shall is is what's overriding everything. The com- county commission must appoint, shall appoint a, a fifth commissioner here. And that's, uh, th- there's the yeah, issue. Well, that's the statute, yeah, but they gotta, they actually have to have a quorum to do that, too, so... You know, for every way to make something happen, there's a way to sometimes drag things out. Just like in Congress right now, as you well know, in the next whatever it is, 30 or 40 days, if we don't get a speaker, there's a good chance the government's going to shut down because you don't have a budget. And we don't Um, have a speaker. And there's no clear path to Jordan uh, or Scalise right now. Uh, according to what the reports I heard this morning, too. So, but at, at, at the heart of the Jefferson County situation clearly is the solar panel farms because that's, as I, from what I've read on the social media pages from both commissioners, that's really the issue here. And I think the voice vote issue was the uh, best thing that they could find to try to justify not showing up for the meetings. They don't want that fifth person appointed who could tilt the vote, uh, which, well, yeah. which would help well, with these solar farms. You know what these. Property owners are getting paid per acre to put solar farms in, don't you? I do not know. What is it? Well, I don't know the exact dollar figure, but it's more than you can make um, raising any crop, except for maybe the one, uh, except for one that you smoke. Okay. Well, it's it's your property, so, so what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is, is, and this is where it's interesting, because I flew with a guy who his literally his family up along the Susquehanna River. They they. He told me what they were getting. They were getting thousands of dollars an acre per year without putting any expenses out. Okay, but that's you their land. Take that. Well, that's right. But the only reason it's happening, and this is where you don't have a free market, you've got these massive subsidies mm-hmm. coming from the federal government, and specifically right now this so-called Inflation Reduction Act had these massive subsidies of print money in D.C. sending it to people. And I don't think this is long term viable. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't disagree with that. that at all. Yeah, yeah I think and that's a good point. So that's the, you know, the dilemma we're in is. So you know, let me ask you a question, Mike. Well, is it? Is it? Well, do, we, we don't actually have time for that because in thirty seconds I got to stop here uh, to get to a break. So I got to go, Mike. Hook, buddy. 